guys sounding great. I got my uh, Christmas tie. Sam is golfing. I need to take a golf. You only wear your Christmas tie once a year. So I got to put it on. Uh, the title of the lesson is More Jesus. Go ahead and turn to uh, John chapter 3. I was inspired uh, by uh, our amazing brother and worship service leader, Nassim. He uh, sent me a text with this passage. And he said, help me do this. <laughs> so in verse 30, John chapter 3, verse 30, speaking of Jesus, uh, John the Baptist says, he must become greater and I must become less. And that seems like, how do I do that? How do I become less? And how does Jesus become more? Hence the title, More Jesus. And so um, I promised you I'd keep it short. So we're going to look at one passage and we're going to examine it here in 2 Peter chapter 1. More Jesus. So as you know, or maybe you don't, but Peter was uh, Jesus' best friend. They were uh, closest in age. Most of the apostles were the age of this first row right here. They were all teenagers, uh, except for Peter. Peter was closer to Jesus' age, so they were super tight. Everywhere Jesus went, Peter went. Uh, although he was the least like Jesus, he was uh, very independent. Uh, he was uh, rebellious at times, uh, did not submit to Jesus at times. But over time, he became wise. You know, I was, uh, I was just talked to in a serious way <laughs> yesterday. Um, I was uh, trying to mend a relationship that I had broken the same day. And uh, so I was getting advice. And the person that helped me talked to me for about an hour with love and everything. But at the end of the day, he said, you can teach stupid. You just can't teach dumb. In other words, you can do stupid things, but still change, but a dumb person will never change. And so uh, Peter changed. He did a lot of stupid things, but he wasn't dumb. He understood what it means uh, to uh, be close to Jesus and, and how to have eternal life. And so here at 2 Peter, let's see what we can learn this morning. You ready? Yeah. More Jesus. Verse 1, it says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And here he promises peace in abundance. Isn't that awesome? Like, isn't that what the world needs? Peace. Uh, you know, um, in abundance is what we need. Peace in abundance. Um, I, was, uh, I was watching the new Matrix trailer that's coming out. And in one of the scenes, he talks about how uh, there's so much information going through people's heads. It just uh, distracts us. I'm like, man, that is so true. There's so much information just going through here. You know, if you don't put this down and pick up your own Bible, you can just be reading the Bible right here and boom, you get message after message after message. There's so much information that takes away from the peace that God is trying to give us. And here he says that you get peace in abundance through our knowledge of Jesus. I, um, I got with Nassim after he sent me that text and I gave him a book called Jesus the Same. It's my second favorite book besides the Bible. And every chapter has a characteristic of Jesus. And I was like, you're going to love this. I said, go ahead. Pick a number between, I forget, I think there's 17 chapters. Pick a number between 1 and 17. And he picked a number. We went there. And it was called the, the poise of Jesus. And it talks about how he was pressured. He was pushed. He was pulled from every side. But he never gave in to all the pressures. He just stayed poised in every situation. And it was exactly what he needed. He's like, man, this is exactly what I need because Nassim is an emotionally awesome guy. <laughs> but we all have that, right? We get pushed or pulled. But Jesus was poised. I said, 
read this book, learn how to implement these uh, characteristics. And he called me yesterday. He's like, man, that one chapter helped me so much. Um, I've, I've learned how to set my uh, thermostat, you know, because our temperatures rise, you know, our emotions can go up and down, but if you can set it like Jesus, then you can stay under control and make wiser decisions. So I'm really proud of, of not seeing this implementing that. Uh, let's keep reading here. Verse three, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. There it is again, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Through our knowledge of Jesus, uh, we can escape the corruption that's all around us. And uh, we really need this during the time of Christmas because there's so much trying to get our attention. There's so many things that are trying to get us. And it's such a selfish time, you know, we want... Even, even when you think you're doing something that's not selfish, like I'm going to host my family, it's still about you. It's about your family, right? It's like you need that. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it can take us away. We can start to uh, extend what we don't have. You know, credit card bills go through the roof because our emotions uh, can take us and we don't stay poised in this area. You know, when he talks about the knowledge, if you look up that word in the Greek, the knowledge is an intimate situation. Um, I remember in high school, I had a, a best friend. Uh, I met him, I think in 10th grade, his name was Ron. And I thought he was the coolest guy. He was so easy to hang around, but he had long hair, like down in the middle of his back. But within two years, guess what? I had long hair. So you know, like, uh, I don't know how it happened, but we ended up like buying the same kind of jeans. Uh, we, we bought the same kind of shirts. Uh, he introduced me to Led Zeppelin. Pretty soon I had every Led Zeppelin album. Uh, we, <laughs> uh, Led Zeppelin, okay. So it wasn't all good. But it was like, you know, you see what happens when you hang out with someone, you start to become more and more like them. You love hanging out with them. This is the intimate relationship that the Bible is talking about with Jesus. It's to get to know him in this way. Uh, you can write this down in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. There's a line there where Paul says that he wants to become like Jesus, getting to know even his sufferings and his death, understanding the resurrection. And if you read before and after that, he says that his whole life, everything that he has, everything that he's been taught, he said that it's all garbage in comparison to becoming like Jesus. This was his heart. And this is what Peter is saying here, is that we get peace and power to overcome the corruption of the world with what? With our knowledge, our intimate knowledge of Jesus. Uh, you know, I've been studying the Bible. Bob and I have been studying the Bible with Adam. There's Adam right there. Uh, uh, Nayama met Adam uh, in a car ride, an Uber ride, and, and uh, she invited him to church a couple months ago, and then he started coming out again a couple weeks ago. We've been getting together and studying the Bible, um, and uh, during uh, Jamie's lunch breaks, they'll get together and they'll do Bible studies. They're going through the book of John, learning about Jesus in a deeper way. And I'm super proud of them. Like, uh, we did a Bible study yesterday, and we talked about the importance of baptism. How at baptism, you get your sins forgiven, and uh, that's when you receive the Holy Spirit. And uh, we did a depth studies, and he was like, I want to do that like now. <laughs> and and uh, after we did the discipleship study, it's like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. I want to be a disciple. And I see the appreciate his heart because a lot of people run away at that, at that point or they persecute us. Uh, and he's like, no, I see it. And that's what I want to do. And so be praying for Adam. He should be getting baptized. Oh,
Let's keep reading here in uh, verse five. Okay. He says, for this very reason, so what's he talking about? He's talking about um, having peace and having this power to overcome corruption. We've been given that through the knowledge of Jesus. And he says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. These are all the qualities of Jesus. Uh, and so he, he says, this is what you need in order to know Jesus and to have this intimate relationship with him. This is what you need to do. You need to add these things. And he uses the phrase, make every effort. He actually says it again here. We're going to read it in a second. But he got that from our Lord Jesus. Let's take a look in Luke chapter 13. More Jesus. That's what we need during Christmas time. Okay, in verse 22, uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 22, it says, Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Wow. Like that is probably the most important question anyone ever asked Jesus right there. Are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. Wow. This is Jesus. Everyone loves the baby Jesus. Yeah. But then he grows up and he says some stuff. <laughs> so here he says to make every effort. And so you see the difference between making every effort and trying. He says many are going to try. There's a difference. You got to ask yourself this morning, am I making every effort to what? To know Jesus. It's not about a bunch of rules and commands. Uh, he says, make every effort to know me. So you can come as you are. You can come with the strength that you have. That's what I love about what Val shared. Where she was at, she was accepted by Jesus. And then wherever you're at, you just make every effort to be more and more in love with Jesus. And when you fall in love with Jesus at that level, guess what happens? You start to love what he loves. You love his music. You love the way he's modest. You love the way that he gives and he shares and he gets on his knees and he loves the children and the old people and the rich and the old and every race. He was perfect in his love. And this will happen to you. If you actually make every effort to know Jesus, because if you don't make every effort, he's going to say the same thing to you. I don't know you. And only those that know him get eternal life. And this is what Peter was talking about. Make every effort. Let's go back. Uh, I want to read this post that uh, our amazing Sybil wrote on Facebook two days ago. First, she starts off with a scripture, of course, and uh, it's Isaiah 28, verses 10 13, uh, through 13, and it talks about the religious people making all these rules, and it ends with this, so then the word of the Lord to them will become do this, do that, a rule for this, a rule for that, a little here, a little there, so that as they go, they will fall backwards. They'll be injured and snared and captured. See, rules get us in trouble. It's not about rules. It's about a relationship with Jesus. And so she writes this, Sybil, in her own words, writes this, I pray that God's word to us 
will never become a book with a list of to-dos, but truly viewed not only as a love letter to us, but a relationship between the creator and the created. That's it. That's our system. And, uh, and I believe that's what's needed. More Jesus. We need more Jesus, relationship with Jesus. Second uh, Peter, chapter 1. Where did I leave off? Okay, verse 8. It says, for if you possess these qualities in an increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Of course, he's writing this to Christians who can forget that they need to possess the qualities of Jesus in an increasing manner. You can't stay where you're at. You have to be more like Jesus every year. Imagine uh, if one of the children that were here, you come back five years later, and they're the exact same height. You'd be like, oh, my goodness, there's a problem, right? <laughs> In the same way, if you haven't grown spiritually, if you're not more loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kindness, if, if you haven't increased in these qualities, there is a problem. And you know what you need? More Jesus. You need more Jesus in your life. I have a couple of uh, quotes on growth from famous people here. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson says, I'm a great believer in luck. And I find that the harder I work, the more I find it. <laughs> Hard work. Uh, Oprah Winfrey says, we can't become what we need to be by remaining what we are. Uh, let's see, Babe Ruth, every strike brings me closer to the next home run. I like that. Uh, Thomas Edison, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Maya Angelou, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. I love that one. You know, uh, this weekend I was, uh, I was watching uh, an old boxing match. When I was a teenager in 1980, uh, I was 14, um, I had a, a friend, his brother was a boxer, professional boxer. And so I'd go over to his house and we hit the bag, hit the speed bag, jump rope, uh, get into the ring. Uh, and I just loved it. I loved boxing. So I would study out. The, the boxers, the great boxers of that time. And there was a guy named Sugar Ray Leonard. He was, uh, he was 27 and 0 and had the championship. And he fights this guy named Roberto Duran. And I like Ber Roberto Duran because uh, él hablaba español. He was, he was Mexican, uh, <laughs> Spanish speaking, uh, like myself. And so uh, he ends up beating Sugar Ray Leonard and takes the title, takes the championship away. But Sugar Ray had a signed deal with him that if Sugar Ray lost, that he would get first right of refusal. He would get the first match and he, he had no choice. And so Sugar Ray's like, I wanna fight you again. And so they set up a fight right away. And so he studied him out. And again, this story hit me because you can't stay the same. You're either going to get better or you're going to get worse. And the second match, you see one person go downhill, really for the rest of his life, and another one skyrocket. And so Sugar Ray got to work, and he uh, memorized really all of what he did wrong, and he went in there and he fought. And in the eighth round, in the eighth round, and they were close on the judge, judge's card, um, Roberto Duran stops fighting. Like the bell hadn't rung yet. He just turned around and he says the words, no mas. And so if you Google it, the no mas fight, you'll be able to see it. It's, it's amazing. The fight is amazing. He shouldn't have stopped. But later on in this documentary, it turns out that he started partying. He, uh, he wasn't as hungry as he was in the first fight, and he had lost it. 
And this is what can happen to us. Especially during the Christmas time, we can take a break, we can stop reading our Bible, uh, other things get in, uh, become distraction because we're not on our same routine, you know, and, and things can happen. And so um, I want us to leave here. Uh, this isn't accurate, so just bear with me. Um, so if you take Christmas, Christ uh, is Jesus, right? And must actually means taking communion. And that started uh, in 1308 or something. They came up with that word. It's taking communion together as a community, Christmas. But I want to use the Spanish word, mas, more, more Christ. So when you see Christmas out there, just remember, oh yeah, more Jesus, more Jesus. We need to celebrate Christmas as more Jesus, amen? All right, so let's, let's close out here in 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 10. It says here, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort, there it is again, to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, this holiday season, as we celebrate Christ Mass, more Jesus, let's make every effort to add to our character the wonderful characteristics of Jesus. And if you don't know where to start, come see us. We'll do Bible studies with you. We will help you focus on Jesus and to God be all the glory. Amen.